Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at APRS and have a look at its relevance in the 21st century. Hello, in this video I'm just going to have a, an overview of APRS. It's one of the, uh, I've had a few comments now asking uh, can you give us an overview? Uh, either I've not used it for quite a while or I've never used APRS so uh, I thought I'd put a video together and, uh, and have a look at it and have a look at some of the features that uh, this particular mode provides and just to see if it's still got any relevance in the 21st century. Okay so I've actually got here, um, I've got my Kenwood, the THD74, I'm also doing a screen record as well um, and you know I'm chatting to you guys on the camera here. So um, APRS can sometimes be associated with just tracking things, uh, people, objects, uh, weather balloons, um, satellites and such like. So uh, yes, it has got a beaconing function and uh, that tends to get, I think tends to get most of its usage is through uh, tracking, um, but uh, APRS, which is um, <clears throat> an automatic, um, uh, automatic packet reporting system. So APRS is automatic uh, uh, packet reporting system. Uh, if you go to APRS.org, that gives you plenty more, uh, plenty of um, the history of um, the mode and um, talks about some of the um, it covers some of the some of the features that I'm just going to briefly cover in this video as well so uh, and then another website that would be useful to go to is APRS.FI and this is where you'll see lots of stations and APRS packets that have been picked up by um, particular stations can uh, receive APRS packets and then um, push them into a database. So there are a lot of uh, what are called eye gates. They're a bit like a, almost like a repeater that picks up the packets. But um, in some cases it might repeat them, like a digital repeater. Um, but in other cases it tends to um, actually uh, send those uh, packets into uh, the TCP protocol, the protocol that's in um, in the internet, so the the, the World Wide Web, um, it has a protocol. Um, so I, I gates tend to get your packets from RF from the air and uh, send them through the internet, and they're added to a, a database. And then from this database, we can also query a lot of the stuff that's going on. So if I go to um, uh, to Echo Zero, Echo Zulu Tango. Um, <clears throat> let's go to look at there. Uh, the last packet on here was um, on the 25th, um, eight hours ago. Uh, actually, if I send the packet out now using this, so if I go. Um, Let's just go down to there and um, let's get a beacon set up, send a beacon. Okay, well, so I've just sent out a beacon. If I refresh this, uh, there we go, uh, Kenwood THD 74, uh, five seconds ago. And um, that was picked up, um, uh, I wonder if that, oh, okay, so there's me, uh, more or less. Um, and that's where I was picked up um, down here. Um, so uh, M0CYP uh, picked up and that's running a Raspberry Pi with the Direwolf uh, software on and then that eye gate then sent that packet into the uh, into the internet and ended up on their database. So <clears throat> Yes, I can send my uh, location um, via uh, APRS. But what I can also do, if I go into my messages, um, I can also send, um, I can send text messages as well. So what I'll do is, um, I'm just going to um, send, um, oops. Uh, okay, 
I'm just going to send a, a message to my uh, mobile. Obviously, I'll blank these numbers out on the. Um, Two, two, and then send um, test send. Okay, so I've now sent a. <clears throat> I've now sent a. Um, text message which in time should um, head its way, work its way through the SMS gate gateway and uh, be sent to my phone and then I can also reply via text message back to the number that the message um, the message will come through uh, via a number on my mobile phone and I'll be able to send back a message back through the gateway to my APRS. So what this means is we can send a message <clears throat> if, if the mobile phone was uh, off the grid somehow and there was no um, coverage there for mobile phone we could actually send a message back and forth be picked up by an eye gate rerouted through the internet through the gateway uh, there we go it's now been uh, picked up and uh, passed around i'm hoping at some point uh, during this um, video we will get the um text message coming through my phone sometimes it takes uh, a, a, takes a while because it needs to be passed from a couple of stations or through the internet um so while so one thing to think about is on the on the radio we have a setting in the aprs um, that is the, the 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 basic setting for um, here we go. One of the settings that we use is the path that the packets can take. What we do is we send a packet out, as well as the information, the data in that packet. We also tell how many times that packet should be redistributed, and um, in most settings we use what's called wide wide. Uh, so this is two hops. So one repeater could then pick that packet up, pass that to a second repeater, and it would end there. But you can change the wide, wide setting and have relay or a number of different types of settings that would make that packet go a lot, a lot further. But I think generally that we tend to use wide, wide. I've never used any of the other settings. Apparently, if you um, uh, abuse the, those settings, you get a knock on the door and all of the uh, the APRS police come and take your um, equipment away. So um, I, I know that we changed that when we were actually working with the APRS on the space station. You can change it from wide wide to something that, that the path would actually get to the space station. But that, that's more of an in-depth feature that I'm not going to cover in this uh, particular video. So we can send uh, messages to um, an SMS gateway but we can also um, update a bulletin. So uh, I've set up my own bulletin, which is um, bulletin uh, it's on group one, and the bulletin is called e uh, EZT. So I can actually update my bulletin from here. I can just go um, uh, test, um, test, um, A, P, P R S. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm just going to send test APRS. <clears throat> so now, hopefully, um, if I go to see if my bulletin shows up, EZT, there we go, EZT. Uh, <clears throat> So it did, yeah, it worked. So I'm updating my bulletin there as well. So we can actually send messages either simplex to one to one or one to many. Uh, we can also send messages from one to an eye gate that pass through an eye gate, and that can go to SOTA, it can go to an SMS gateway. 
um, you know, you, you, there are uh, numerous gateways connected to APRS that you can actually send messages into that gateway. Uh, we can also update a bulletin, so it's a broadcast bulletin, so that could be broadcasting an activity about a station or an, an expedition of some type. Um, so uh, what we've covered here is that we can do tracking, uh, so beacon in your GPS beacon in. We can also send messages and we can also update a bulletin as well. And um, so uh, something else that, that on the early video you saw me um, engaging with was, uh, let me just, um, okay, here we go. Right, sometimes it takes a few seconds. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so one more thing uh, we want to look at is um, <clears throat> uh, you may saw an early video where I was trying to track the weather using APRS and as we can see on this map okay, so one thing that we saw in an early, early video of mine I was uh, trying to track the weather using APRS and as you can see on this map we have uh, a number of weather stations and I was I was picking just I was picking one weather station up when I was trying to track that storm. Ideally, I would have liked to have picked two, three, or four weather stations and received their weather data to actually look at the weather pattern. Um, but on that particular occasion, uh, I did struggle to pick up the uh, the weather stations. Um, oh, there's a little chap there in his car being tracked. So, um, see, there's, there's a little chap here. Um, let's have a look at this. Um, 2E0 VKB. Um, <clears throat> he's uh, on his way back from work or whatever. Um, but let's have a look at some of these. We've got here, we've got a weather station, which is FW2638. Um, and we can actually have a look at some of their weather data on this as well. So, you know, it, it is, it's pretty handy for visualising the weather data from these stations. So, um, it's, it's worth having to play, play around, even with the, the web interface as well. Uh, so, one of the things that I wanted just to talk about is um, we have all these features in APRS. And I, I, I would um, say that many of these features go um, underused. Um, people uh, that do have APRS may just use the tracking more than anything. Uh, the bulletin boards, um, I don't see much activity on the bulletin boards in the UK at the moment. Um, I don't know uh, if there's much um, activity on the SOTA um, summits either. Um, so, you know, there, there's there's a lot that we could get from APRS that we don't use at the moment. Um, I know that, I know, I understand that Raynet and a few uh, MCOM uh, folk are using it, but um, I think there's, there's more fun to have for this mode. It's all there, it's all working mostly. Um, I have I have some great fun with this. Um, you don't necessarily have to have an expensive handset to <clears throat> operate APRS. Um, you can use a Raspberry Pi or a computer. You can get a software TNC. Whereas these devices, these tend to have uh, hardware TNCs in them. Um, a TNC is is the thing that actually generates the packet. Uh, but you can get virtual um, uh, TNCs, which can run on Raspberry Pi or, or a computer or anything. So, you know, you can rig together an APRS station. Uh, um, you, all you need to do is get a passcode, which you need to prove that you have a, a, um, <clears throat> a license, an amateur license. So uh, you do need to be license operator to, um, to transmit uh, APRS packets because you're using RF for that, that purpose. So that's just a, an introduction into a, APRS. I'm hoping that I can uh, edit this together. It was a bit, uh, hot, you know, a bit random. I just plugged everything in, thought I'd just have a go at talking to the camera about it. But later on, I'm going to try and give more demos of it in use out in the field. 
So uh, keep an eye on that and hopefully bit by bit we'll start piecing these together into a number of APRS related videos and, and uh, activity. So I hope, I hope that was uh, useful. I hope that uh, that gave some insight into this mode uh, or a reintroduction into the mode. So uh, please give me a thumbs up and a like uh, and subscribe if you're not already and uh, look forward to the next video. Please don't forget to put any comments in below and uh, I always get back to them. So cheers for now. Okay, bye-bye.